For breast reconstruction after cancer, should you have your implants placed over the muscle or under the muscle? And do you even have a choice? There are pros and cons to both and many factors to consider. I looked into this pretty extensively when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm a breast cancer thriver and a chiropractor. Let's get into the definitions of both before we get into the factors. Over the muscle reconstruction is also called pre-pectoral and pectoral just refers to your chest muscle. During surgery, that chest muscle is left completely intact, so nothing happens to the chest muscle. When you have your mastectomy, where the breast tissue is taken out, that area forms a pocket where the tissue expander or the implant will go. So it basically goes in the space where the breast tissue used to be. Under the muscle reconstruction is also called subpectoral. When the mastectomy is done, there's a new space created underneath the chest muscle, the pectoralis muscle, which goes across the chest like this. And in that new space, that's where the tissue expander or implant will sit. Going forward, I may use the term under the pec interchangeably with under the muscle. A few things to keep in mind before making this decision. How do you know what type of surgery you're gonna get? This generally comes up in your consultation with your plastic surgeon before your mastectomy. For some women, based on a number of factors, it may be more automatic that you're having one surgery over the other, so there may not actually be that much discussion about this. Your activity level may come into play when making this decision. If you are more active, it's definitely worth having a conversation with your surgeon about that, as there may be a preference for over the pack reconstruction. Surgeons will have their areas of expertise, so depending on who your surgeon is, it may not be an option for you to go in front of the pec. Even if it is an option, not all patients are gonna be candidates for going over the muscle. Let's get into the advantages and disadvantages of over the muscle reconstruction. In terms of advantages, there's no disruption at all to the chest muscle during surgery, so there really isn't any change in function when you're using your chest muscles. Because this surgery is slightly less invasive, there can be a shorter recovery time, potentially decreased pain, and a quicker return to physical activities. There could also be potentially less side effects because it's a little bit less invasive. And lastly, no animation deformity. I'll cover this in more detail when I go through under the pec reconstruction. Disadvantages of implants going in front of the muscle is slightly more visible rippling. This is because the implant is closer to the surface and then you don't have that pec muscle in front to camouflage it. Remember, with reconstruction, there's just the skin tissue and then the implant. As compared to a breast augmentation, there would be the skin tissue, then the breast tissue, and then the implant. So there would be more coverage with an augmentation as compared to a reconstruction. The rippling is sometimes addressed with ADM in your surgery or fat grafting. There can be more risk of capsular contracture if the implants go in front of the chest muscle. This is like a scarring that happens around the implant. Not all surgeons have experience with this technique. So depending on who your surgeon is, you may not have this as an option. Let's look now at advantages and disadvantages of under the chest reconstruction. In terms of advantages, this is a very common procedure, so many surgeons have experience with this approach. There is a newer shift to going over the pack, so there may be more options if you wanted to go this route. There's less visible rippling of the implant. This would depend on the person, of course, but the implant is essentially further away from the skin because it's under the muscle, so the muscle provides more camouflage to it, so you're less likely to see that rippling. Some people say that going under the chest muscle results in more of a natural look. With our original breast, there's a natural slope that would go down from the chest wall into the breast area, like a very sort of gradual transition. If the implant is under the muscle, then this slope is more maintained. With implants over the muscle, you can sometimes see where that chest wall comes down and then the implant starts. So you have that sort of clear shelf where that implant starts. Lastly, there's less risk of capsular contracture with going under the muscle. In terms of disadvantages, the surgery is slightly more invasive and there will be a longer recovery time associated with that. 
animation deformity. I mentioned this previously. With over the chest implants, there's no animation deformity at all. This only happens with reconstruction under the chest muscle. Normally your chest muscle or that pectoralis muscle sits flat on the chest wall. When you have an implant that goes behind that chest muscle, anytime you activate your pec muscle, it essentially compresses the implant and then the implant moves out to the side and up. And that happens with every contraction. This is completely normal and expected, but annoying. There can be a change in function of your pec muscle. When that implant is put underneath the muscle, that pec muscle is essentially in an overstretched position all the time. And as a result of this may not activate as well. You may not notice this too much with everyday movements, although I did, as you're activating your pecs more, so things like push-ups, anything that's really engaging that chest muscle, you may notice this more. Altering that chest muscle can also lead to compensations in the neck, in the shoulder, in the mid-back area, and these can be short or long-term. So what did I choose? Given how physical my job is and how active I am outside of work, I had a preference to go over the pec. When speaking with my plastic surgeon, she said this was an option for me, but she would make the decision in the OR to make sure I was a candidate for this. So once the mastectomy part of the surgery is over, she would be able to determine this. I had a double mastectomy and on the cancer side, my surgical oncologist took out much more tissue on that side. The result of this is that the skin left over, something called the mastectomy flap, was very thin. And in my case, this was a good thing because the tumor was very close to the front margin of the skin. And so by being more aggressive with taking more tissue out, we got a clear margin. I can show you what I mean by thinner tissue because it's not just what we think of as the actual breast, it's the whole chest area where that tissue is thinner. The breast tissue goes from the collarbone up at the top, the midline, the ribs, and then tapers off into the armpit area. So all of those areas are much thinner with the tissue. So if I were to go on my non-cancer side, so I had a mastectomy here too, if I were to pick up the tissue, it's pretty easy to do that. If I went onto the cancer side and I tried to grab the tissue, see how much thinner it is? It's much harder to actually pick anything up. Because the mastectomy flap or that skin tissue left over was so thin, it meant that I was not a candidate to do over the pec reconstruction. There can be some pretty poor surgical outcomes if you do this because of the lack of blood supply. So something called skin necrosis, or you could potentially lose that implant. Because I knew the decision to go over or under the pec was going to be made in the OR, this was the first thing I asked about when I woke up from surgery. I thought I actually had over the pec because my range of motion and function for the first few days after surgery was quite good. And then I actually found it a few days later that it was under the pec. I was pretty disappointed when I found out my tissue expanders were under the pec, but at the same time, I was super thankful to have some sort of breast after having a double mastectomy. Let's take a look at how my actual surgery of going under the pec lines up with some of the points that I talked about previously. How about visible rippling? Remember, for under the pec, there's usually less rippling because that implant is covered by the muscle. For me, because the skin is thinner on the cancer side, because remember, more breast tissue was taken out, you can see some rippling. If I were to bend over, you can see it basically on all sides of the breast. So inside, at the bottom, on the outside, and at the top. If I were just standing there wearing a bathing suit, you can see a little bit sort of on the inside portion, but not too much, and this actually doesn't bother me at all. How about a more natural look of implants going under the pec? So on my non-cancer side, there is a bit more of a natural slope that goes down from the chest wall into the breast area. And on my cancer side, because that uh, skin is thinner, there's a little more of a shelf, so where the chest wall comes down, and you can see a little bit more of that transition where the implant starts. I think if I had chosen a much larger implant, then this would be more obvious, but this also doesn't bother me too much. If this video has been helpful to you so far, hit that like button below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. 
How about compensations in the body? Remember, there's generally more with going under the pec because you're affecting that chest muscle. Because I had a double mastectomy, it's actually a good comparison to make between the two sides because on my non-cancer side, I don't actually have any issues. Any pain or compensations that I have on my cancer side, so in my neck, mid-back, shoulder area, I think are much more related to lymph nodes being removed and cording as a result of that and some radiation side effects. How about animation deformity? So this is something that does bother me. I had tissue expanders in for about a year and then I've had implants in for almost a year and I still haven't gotten used to it. I try to work around this and modify movements, but it's still a work in progress for me. I'm very body aware and I definitely notice the difference when my pec muscles are contracting now as compared to before and the resulting movement that comes with that implant. How about reduced pec muscle function? So I definitely noticed this too. Now I will say that I'm doing way less chest exercises now than I was doing before surgery. So it's not a great comparison because I am gonna be just a bit weaker overall from not doing as much. But the function remember is related to the pec muscle being in that overstretched position because the implant is behind it. So I can just tell that my pecs don't activate as well as they did before, aside from just being generally weaker. As annoying as the animation deformity is and the change in pec function, it's not like I'm gonna explant these. As you can see, there's a lot to consider when making the decision to go over or under the pec. You can speak with your plastic surgeon to discuss what the best option is for you.